The first patient dosed as part of the Passage Bio GM1 trial occurred in March 2021. We started with the late onset GM1 patients, as was requested by the regulatory agencies, and we finished dosing the first cohort in September 2021. We have after review of the safety and um, efficacy information from the IDMC in December, we got permission to advance to cohorts two and three. And I'm pleased to announce that we've now dosed our first patient in cohort two, which is our high dose late infantile group, and our first patient in cohort three, which is the early infantile group. The results were presented at Worlds and there were a couple key messages that I would love to pass on. The first one is that there were no safety concerns identified as a result of the treatment. We've had no SAEs. All the AEs that were reported were mild to moderate, and even the moderate ones were deemed non-treatment related. There's been no evidence of DRG toxicity, which DRG toxicity, dorsal root ganglia toxicity has been a a question because it occurred in the animal models, but it has not occurred in our trial or in any of the other ones. Another area that was reported at the world was our biomarker data. And we have seen substantial increases in beta-galactosidase in both this, the CSF and the serum. This is important because one question about the ICM approach was whether we would be able to get good transduction in the periphery. And even though this was shown in the animal models, there have been skeptics, but we had the same rise in beta-galactosidase activity in the serum as we had in the CSF, which was very encouraging. Another important point that we, we reported at World was that the biomarker increase <laughs> we had no loss of beta-galactosidase since, since the initial treatment. Once it rose in the CSF at one month and we had data at three months um, for the serum, it remains stable at the six month time point in our first patient, which is as far out as we have right now. Even though we're very happy with the biomarker and the substantial increases in the beta galactosidase, um, those results, ultimately success is gonna be demonstrated by clinical improvement. And what we were able to report at Worlds is that we saw significant developmental improvement across all developmental areas in both patients. So I'll give you a little bit of information. The first patient had a family history of the disease, was diagnosed very early at two months of age. And as a result of that, the, the doctors were looking for symptoms and the child was diagnosed at 14 months after falling behind developmentally and developing hypotonia. The child was able to get into the studies very quickly and was dosed by 15 months. And this child has made substantial gains across the developmental area. So the child went from 12 months um, developmentally on the Vineland to 23 months of age developmentally on the Vineland um, when assessed nine months later. The child has made some significant um, improvements. So let me give you some examples. At the beginning of the study, the child was able to take a few steps, uh, but not able to have sustained ambulation. Nine months later, the child is now running, is now able to kick a ball, is able to climb up and down stairs, and even balance on one foot. That type of gross motor development is not typical of late onset GM1. Most children plateau between 12 to 13 months and never gain the ability to walk um, independently and well. And that's been reported by several natural history studies. And to see a child achieving these, goal, these um, milestones is really quite remarkable um, and outside of what would be expected. Another area where we've seen improvement in the, in the, child, the child was not using any words, was not using mama or data and is now using 10 to 20 words with meaning and is able to identify objects and has made substantial progress. The second patient I think is even more remarkable because the first patient was caught early. The second patient did not have the benefit of a family history 
So struggle to get the diagnosis like happens in so many of these children. The child manifested symptoms at 12 months of age with developmental delay and hypertonia, but it took until 30 months of age for the child to get diagnosed. Even though the child immediately got into our study, substantial developmental loss had occurred. So the child was seven months developmentally on the Bailey at the time of enrollment. The, to put into perspective, the child had begun to take some steps at one point, but had lost the ability to walk and had not taken any steps in four months. Also, I understand the child was using words like mom and dad at one point, but had lost the ability to talk. One of the questions was once regression and damage has occurred, would there be the possibility of improvement? And what we were able to report at World was that even though it's only been four months, this child has regained these lost milestones that um, the child had lost. So the child again is walking and this has been observed by the team um, that is doing the studies. The child is now using mama and data again. And so we're very encouraged. And while it's early, there's hope for these children.